Well, we're joined in the studio by Greens leader Bob Brown. Welcome to 7.30. Hi, Chris. Uh, did you force the Prime Minister into a carbon tax? No, uh, we did uh, make clear that we had the Ghana prescription for a tax and then a trading And that was one scheme. year followed by a trading scheme? That's right. Uh, well, no, it wasn't one year. It was a period. Uh, but we went, went to the election with that prescription. We then uh, made an agreement with the Prime Minister to set up a committee to look at that and be informed by experts. And out of that committee has come the prescription that we now, or the framework that we now know about. Sure, but she says that she had her heart set on a carbon market and now she's been forced into a carbon tax and if you didn't force her and the independents didn't force her and she wants one, why don't we have one? Well, she's, she's getting a carbon market. There's a tax on the way to the carbon market. Three it's to five years. That. That's right. But then there's a review after that, so there might not ever be a carbon market. Well, uh, the intention is everybody's agreed that a carbon market is where we're aiming. We have always said that ourselves. Christine Milne's been very strong mm. on that. Uh, we'll hopefully dovetail into a world which has got uh, an international market going and Australia will be a leader in establishing can, that international climate can, can you for reducing carbon Sure, I understand emissions. what it would do, but, but, but can you understand why people might be a bit bemused if the Prime Minister says that she's been forced into a carbon tax that might go five years or even longer because it's going to be reviewed and you were happy to have a carbon market, the independents were happy to have a carbon market and she was too, so who forced her into having a tax up front? Well, I don't know. You'll have to ask her about that, Chris. The I think fact you have, probably. Yeah, but is this the issue? Is this I think really it is the issue? an issue for people, yes. Well, it, it is for you, but for us, it's getting this great country of ours into an economically responsible trajectory for an age of environmental uh, ec economic well-being. Now, the German uh, government has just pointed out this week that they're going to take the lead here. They're not going to allow to Obama to overtake them because... Their legislation in this area seven years ago mm. has created 250,000 jobs and that'll be 900,000 jobs by 2030 and they want to stay in front. Sure. I and we want, can come to that in just a moment. But to the get point that economic here, I guess, and jobs is advantage that the Prime well. Minister made a very big play before the election was held about there not being a tax. There is now a tax. It might go three to five years. She says she's been forced into that position, I'm just trying to establish who forced her. Well, I've been to no committee meetings with a thumbscrew, I can tell you. Nor so it wasn't you, it was a short story. Uh, absolutely. We've had a, a mature discussion about how to, to move Australia to a carbon price and uh, there's independence, Greens, uh, the Labor government. Remember Tony Abbott sat out of this. Mm. Tony Abbott's prescription is to give the polluters the money off the taxpayers. What we're moving to here through a uh, tax on polluters or uh, and a trading scheme is to take the money from the polluters and give it to the householders and the general economy and to renewable energy and people like that. And that's where I think the problem is for Tony Abbott. He's, he's backing the wrong horse. He's saying, take the money off the people, give it to the polluters. We're saying, take it off the polluters and make sure you look after the people. But you'll take the money off the polluters, which are also big employers, by the way, and they will take it off the people. Isn't that the case? Well, uh, really. Uh, in Germany, Won't where they, they pass the price? Well, on? in Germany, where they've done this, uh, I just uh, reiterate, 250,000 jobs created. Are we going to look after the 68 thousand jobs on the Great Barrier Reef. That's twice as many in, as in the whole of the coal industry. Are we going to look after the manufacturing sector in Australia and make sure that it's got the advantage of, a, of being a world leader in an age where you have to take an ecological lead and, and so look after the jobs there? Or are we going to take the Abbott view, which is very last century and which is going to leave us at the back of the pack. But just briefly on those jobs you talk about in Germany, each of those came at a cost of €205,000 each by way of subsidies. Is that a fair price for a job? Whatever way you look at it, Chris, they are onto a winner and they want to take it forward. And if you're talking about subsidies, how about the $11 billion a year in fossil fuel subsidies going off taxpayers to that industry at the moment with a very, very sparse return in terms of jobs? Just quickly, one last thing on markets. Do you believe that markets are an efficient way of pricing things? Because we've just had the experience of the financial crisis. So you say this is where we should go, but are markets the best way to do it? Well, in the financial crisis, of course, it was the Greens who took the responsible point of view that we should back 
the, uh, the government stimulus package, and that saved 600,000 jobs and, and a lot of small businesses with it. Uh, the um, Abbott crew uh, opposed that. Sure, we would have gone into a recession. The, best way of well, the point things. I'm making here is uh, markets are... Uh, we, we back free enterprise, uh, but government is there to look after the interests of the people who vote, vote us in and to regulate. Uh, and we've done that very successfully, and the Greens have shown a great deal more responsibility there than the Abbott Coalition. Sure. Now, you've handed me some figures. You've done some polling. You think that this, the move that you're making on carpet pricing, is 